welcome all to my Jurassic Garden diary. I'm Steve. I hope you're doing okay. Um, it's morning before work. Um, my wife is working upstairs, so I apologise if you can um, hear her harking on up there. She's a bit louder than me. But yeah, this is just a follow on from the last one where I didn't get everything covered and I did a bit more. So we'll just crack on round and sort of see how we do. So you can see I finished the camellia bed here, or camellia corner as I'm calling it. Um, like I said last time, I just buy the ready mix cement in the bag and then just add water to it into a bucket. Um, and the blue um, blocks are thermalite, so you can just cut them with a wood saw so I can get these like 45 degree angles on them without having to use a block cutter. So, in here we have got the two camellias which were over in the opposite corner that's because they won't get any sun over there and I know they don't like morning sun so this is very much a midday onward sunny spot the arachnoids you can see which was dead is now coming back to life so I've moved them in there the sword fern which wasn't liking it in the middle bed under the dahlia I've taken him out to see if he'll recover and this dryopteris wallachiana crispum is just here because it's fairly big and it's quite nice as you come out the door there uh, the cyathea has been potted up into a nice pot there was a one of the annual climbers in there which is now there because it wasn't doing anything oh yeah on a note on these climbers if we have a look here I'll just show you one of the flowers, not getting the masses of flowers, but you can just see that one there. So they're quite nice, but they're not very, for me, not very like, you know, I was hoping there's going to be hundreds of them on there every day, but it's not. And then otherwise, the Jurassic Gold that was with the Cyathea is in my little tiki head, which I've had for years. Um, I just found them out and just put them in there just to hide the fact that that is a floating trellis at the moment until I decide what I'm going to do with that. That's a banana pup which didn't go as well as the other ones. I think something happened with the leaf and it couldn't unfurl um, and it trapped the leaf that decided to come out two weeks after I chopped them off. So I'll just leave that one and see what happens. But other than that, this corner's looking quite nice now. It's been softened up. Obviously, I'll get rid of the kids' stuff, the scooter and the blackboard out of there. Hopefully that bamboo will sort of grow up like that lot and bush out. And then I can just sort of keep them in there. And the end game of that is I'll put some form of edging on top of the stones and then I'll just render it up um, and paint it up. So if we make our way over to the other corner, because that's where it's been going off as well. Uh, just another thing actually, there's something that's been bugging me. I've got my back to the, um, to the house now. So as I walk up, something is not square um, with regard to this is like the theme is octagons for this garden it's to the play area and this what will be a seating area where the clothesline is is two octagons and they're not side by side they're slow, slightly overlapping in the center and what it is i figured it out is there is this is a true octagon the one with the black edging you can see it comes across here goes up there there's no edging on that middle bit but then you can see that far bed it angles back and then it should come across and what it is is that the true line for the right hand side the equivalent of this 45 that's going up by that plank of wood by the insetti is actually if we come up here you see the bench I've made and it's got a little wall behind it if I was to lay the black edging at the foot of that wall that way so i.e. it would connect onto this sort of bit that's coming this way the other side of the wall that would be a true octagon but where I've built this wall out to make up for the fact that this is coming inside the main octagon it's shifted the center point of this horizontal um, part here across like wherever that is 20 centimeters um, and what that means is, is that halfway is shifted 10 centimeters to the left and if I stand here dead in the center you can see that the bar stools the, 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 you've got the two bar stools and then that stone that's in the middle of them just behind the clothesline you can see it's not dead on center there it's probably about 10 centimeters off so I need to do something to do a trick of the eye what I'm going to do actually is these things that I've just got down for now I'm actually going to put them in the center as best I can and then sort of see where my eye takes me with that. Um, another thing while we're here is 
this is going to be a little jut out octagon there's going to be a pergola on top of it but this is where this i'm going to get a table and chairs here so you can walk around it a bit easier but what it means is that say we're in the center now it's sort of got one coping stone and then it angles up but if i do one coping stone and angles up there i'm gonna have a bit of a bigger sofa there so yeah just keep these things in mind when I'm being a bit particular with things but let's go around and just see what I've done the giant honeysuckle has come finally the last piece of the puzzle for this year obviously it's quite small so I potted them up like the lady advised me to which is 75% uh, uh, John Inns number three and then 25% multi-purpose I'll just put them there for now so he sort of gets used to the light of where he's going to sit which will be where that eucomus is but i'm going to overwinter that there and the ginger i'll probably move that ginger as well um next year i'll leave them to winter and just mulch them up but otherwise that's why i've been building all this at the moment is so that when the time comes next year i can just chuck it in and it's all ready to go so over here this is one of the next things i'm going to be doing is this big waterfall this is why it's important i need to if i need to move any of these stones which i have cemented in uh, now is the time to do it rather than when i build up everything so at the moment i'm just going through logistically in my mind because to build this massive pondless waterfall i'm going to need about a pallet of concrete blocks half a pallet of thermalite blocks a ton of sand which is one of them dumpy bags um some cement a mixer and then all the rocks that are obviously on there at the moment and sort of dotted around like under that seat and things they need to be stored somewhere because that's where we're going to be building it so i've priced it all up i reckon for 600 quid i'm going to be able to get all the building materials um and um the pump spillway hose pond liner it's going to be a pondless waterfall which effectively is a ponded waterfall so you just fill the pond with stones um so yeah that's the, you know need some money for that so moving on around to this corner the t-rex are still umming and ah in the tetrapanics i'm still umming and ah in about digging him up or not you can see it's actually sort of going really well now now it's cooled down to sort of between 15 and 20 degrees it's sort of throwing up things a bit quicker than it has been all through the last couple of months so yeah it's it's one of them um I'm still putting that bit of copper wire around it just to stop the slugs um, or try to but otherwise what I did over the um, yesterday was put this fence in you can probably see the bottom three I've left a slightly bigger gap than the top three between them and my theory is is that if that all if I fill all of that up with ferns it's going to be quite humid and because there's a nice gap between their fence and this fence um, I'm hoping it will sort of create a little bit of airflow and just get it in behind if it's all going to be quite bushy and all that. But this, my, one of my next things to do now, now that I've got the fence up to that height, is to take that bamboo out and tie the hydrangea in at a couple of levels just so that I can just leave it then to grow as it is. Scheffler is doing alright. As I said, I'm going to suck it and see with regard to um overwintering it because i wouldn't normally mind but it's the new it's the it's their first year if you see what i mean so i'm going to be a little bit careful with it other than that over here what i've really been thinking about is the <coughs> the sort of layout of it all and the way i've sort of figured it is that i've split the vertical space into six different levels so we've got level one which is basically just ground cover so things like ivy if you imagine that Level two is going to be fern level, so like this heron housing here, this errata here, um, this uh, fern here, eth ethyferosa. Then the next level is going to be halfway up the fence, which is going to be this sort of tree fern level. And then obviously you can kind of guess if you split the remaining half a fence in two levels, um, that's going to be four, then five, and then six is anything on top of the thing. And that just frees me up quite well, as long as I don't have two numbers the same next to each other or, you know, to that effect. It should sort of stagger up quite well. Um, so, yeah, I did say about this errata last time, but it is absolutely fantastic. I do like that. It's a nice, cheap, easy plant, and it gives you really good uh, vibes. Um, tree ferns putting out his new fronds still there's another one to come out as well so 
I, I still need to chop this broken one off, which I'll do at some point. I've moved the Dryopteryx Wallachiana in here. This is where the Cyathea was. I did say I was going to put a fence post bang on this um, junction, but then what I thought was that if I need to run a, a um, fence post across the top to this fence post, it's not going to marry up with the black edging. So I'm actually going to, if we think... If you look at that fence post there and see how far off the black edging is from it, it's about 30 centimetres parallel. So if I come 30 centimetres in this way, which is pretty much going to be somewhere between that peg and that sort of dripper that's half covered, bang on the edging. And then what that'll do, I did actually th sort of half think about this, it actually lines up with that one straight, so it will tie in quite nicely that. Um, so that's something for me to um, do next. Um, another thing I did, I obviously put this trellis in on the last one. I was going to fill that all in, but I thought I'd let the cement go right off for a few days. And also, I was messing around with these steps trying to get the layout of them. I remembered why I did it the way I did it now is because this is actually one of those big stones that snapped. Um, it got dropped. So the question is, thinking about my detail with the um, octagons and that is, if you consider this is on a 45 and then the front of the seating area can be on a straight and then it will jut back 45 in towards the sort of where the fence post was going to go so that ties up quite nicely with the octagon. However, if we're over here, you see this bit is kind of a mirror to that edge that I was on about earlier so if that's just going to be a sort of octagon here and then go off and be straight under the um, new seat when we get it I might want to make this straight as well so that in time it all marries up um, so yeah I'm still considering whether to have it like it is now which is the favorite or whether I swap them around put the big one on the top and the little one on the bottom uh, how far out to pull them because basically the further out they come out away from that fence the more space up there which means the more options for sort of seating I'm going to be able to get up there and then another thing I've just been pondering I hit the nail on the head last time I'm definitely thinking about too much in one time is this is a little shady corner with you know next to the house and this is going to be used for storage what I'm going to do is get a water butt one of them big ones you know the wide ones and put them sort of against that corner fence panel and I'm hoping what I'm going to do is raise it up so that the top of it is level with the fence which means it should be about halfway up that fence what that will mean is that the bottom of the water butt is higher than the highest drippers here which means I might be able to use gravity in order just to do the watering and then for the tree ferns and the vertical gardens, I'll run out another circuit for the irrigation and run that off a pump or off the main or something like that. But yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens with that again. I've got to clear all this area out because a lot of that doesn't need to be in there now. And it'll make it easier for me to pick up these leaves which are going to drop um, fairly soonish. So yeah, that's about most of it for now. Um, my next thing is, yeah, to cl clear out this, get the sort of set in stone and then I can forget about that, um, that area there. Um, and yeah, just um, sort of probably get the fence posts in, but I need to work out where that's going to be square so I can work out where to put these fence posts. I can put that one in and the other thing I was thinking that's slightly annoying is I'm going to have a big fence post right in front of that banana on the black edging um, and the reason for that is is so that I can train some wires around the place almost like a spider's web um, and have climbers growing out the, you know across the horizontal plane above head height but I'm probably going to need to make it all marry up with this fence post which is slightly short of the horizontal black edge and under the slide I'm going to need the equivalent one over there which is going to mean taking all my flower bed and wall apart so yeah but now is the time to do it but yeah other than that we're not doing too bad like I said I'm thinking of the vertical spaces as well just trying to fill them up um, so yeah more ponderings to be had but I'm hoping the next time I do a video oh this will all be full of blocks sand cement 
etc etc ready for the waterfall which is which is where it's going to get really interesting so yeah make sure you're around for that might do another update between that depending how long that takes but other than that i shall see you then bye for now